Now, one might think that hooking a laptop to a video production system is actually easy, but in the real world, it's very much not so. We run into all kinds of challenges that we have to have solutions for. So the video today is going to be talking about seven of those different challenges and possible solutions for each one of them. Hey everyone, my name is Doug. I run a company in Orem, Utah called DJP. We do live event video production, concerts, sporting events, and particularly with reference to this video, business conferences. So one of the challenges that we run into very often with business conferences is people bring in laptops, particularly presenters, and they have keynote presentations or PowerPoint presentations that they need to include as part of the video stream. At the same time, they need that video to be up on projection screens in the venue. We have to deal with both of those things. So in this video today, I'm going to talk about seven different challenges that come when you're trying to connect a laptop and do a video production system and offer some solutions for each one of those things. First one that we run into is people bring in laptops that don't even have an HDMI port. So what do you do about that? Well, personally, I always make sure that I carry a bunch of adapters with me. In this particular case, I have three of the most common. The first one, which you'll find primarily on MacBook computers, is Mini DisplayPort. It's just a very simple adapter. Go from Mini DisplayPort to HDMI. The next one you'll find on a lot of newer machines, both Windows and Mac, is USB-C. And again, just adapt straight to HDMI. And the last one you'll encounter mostly on older Windows corporate type laptops, and that's full-size DisplayPort. I haven't seen very many of these, but they do come up from time to time. Having all three of these in my utility bag means I can usually deal with most of the laptops that show up at a particular event. Every once in a while, somebody shows up with something oddball. I had a situation a month ago where somebody brought a desktop computer that only had DVI on it. So now that we've got HDMI, we get to our second challenge, which is converting that signal to SDI. Of course, the easy solution would be to just use an HDMI to SDI converter. There's three different examples here. But in reality, things are a little bit more complicated than that. Because HDMI can be a little bit unpredictable, you probably want to have something that's a little bit more reliable than that. And that gets us to our next challenge, dealing with resolution and frame rate. Some laptops make it really difficult to set the resolution and frame rate, in some cases even impossible. Now, Macs in particular can be a little bit difficult about getting the right frame rate, and Windows PCs, where the person with the laptop doesn't have administrative privileges, probably can't change the setting either. The solution to this problem is to use a resolution and frame rate converter, sometimes called a scaler. I have here a Blackmagic Design Updown Cross HD and a Decimator Design MDHX. Both of these products will actually do a really good job of this, and either one will work just fine if you're only doing conversion in one direction. The big difference between these two is how they handle SDI and HDMI conversion. The up-down cross HD can only do conversion in one direction at a time, whereas the MDHX can convert both directions simultaneously. The other big difference between these is how they're configured. The Blackmagic Design Unit has dip switches on the top in order to select the desired resolution and frame rate. Fortunately, there's a handy reference chart on the back, whereas the Decimator uses an on-screen menu where you can specify the resolution frame rate you want along with a bunch of other options. Having a scaler like these guarantees that no matter what signal format you have coming in on HDMI, you always have the right format that you need for your switcher on the output. That way, when you've got 10 presenters that need to plug in their laptop in one day, you're not having to fiddle with the settings on 12 different laptops in order to make it work. They'll just work by plugging them in. So the next challenge is connecting to a projector. Most of the venues that we're working in have projectors, and they usually have HDMI or VGA inputs that you can use. So if the only output on your laptop is connected to the input on your scaler, how would you then get the signal into the projector? Well, both of these devices actually have HDMI outputs as well. If you're in a venue that only has VGA inputs for the projector, you can use an HDMI to VGA converter. They're fairly inexpensive and work relatively well. The downside to using them is you don't get to specify the resolution and frame rate that is output on the VGA. One of the advantages of having bi-directional conversion in the decimator units is that I can be feeding a totally different video signal from my video switcher into the projector. So if I wanted to display something other than the laptop feed, I could be feeding from my video switcher. I could use an auxiliary output or even the second mix effects engine in order to create a totally different feed for the venue itself. This could of course be the screen from the laptop, but it could also be an informational graphic, a black screen, or even one of the feeds from the cameras. If I wanted to do the same thing using the Blackmagic converter, I'd have to have a separate SDI to HDMI converter in order to convert that return feed to the necessary HDMI. The fifth challenge can be dealing with a confidence monitor. It's usually a pretty good idea to have a nice big television set up with a feed directly from the laptop so that the presenter can see exactly what the audience is seeing. 
Now, the big question there is how do you feed the confidence monitor if you're already using your HDMI outputs for the projector? The easy answer is an HDMI splitter, like this cheap unit I have here from Amazon. This thing works great, and it also has the added advantage of removing some of the restrictions that are imposed on some HDMI video. You'd want to connect this directly to the output of the laptop, and then have the two outputs of this feed into the confidence monitor, and then into your scaler. Challenge six is long signal runs. Very often, the laptop that you're connecting to is at the opposite end of the room from your video production system. If you're trying to run HDMI, you're going to very quickly find that it doesn't work. HDMI has distance limitations of about 25 feet or 8 meters or less, and that's even with good quality cables. There are certainly ways to make HDMI run over other cable types, such as CAT5, but you're eventually going to need to convert to SDI anyway, so it makes a lot of sense to do the conversion right there at the laptop. SDI, with a decent quality cable, can very often be run up to 100 meters. In most situations, that's going to be enough. Challenge number seven is audio. Inevitably, somebody's going to want to play a video clip, and they're going to need sound. HDMI, of course, does carry sound, as does SDI, but once it's on SDI, what are you going to do with it? If you're using your video switcher to mix audio, you're all set and ready to go. You've already got the audio that you need, all you have to do is turn on the channel. But if you're using a separate mixer, you're going to need to do something to get that audio signal into the mixer. One of the quick ways to do this is an SDI to audio converter. This will give you an analog signal that you can plug into any mixer input. If you want to, you can actually take the audio output of the laptop and convert it to a balanced signal and run something like an XLR cable. In my particular setup, I actually use Dante for audio, which means it runs over a computer network. All I have to do is plug in this audio from Audinate. It has a USB port on one end and Ethernet on the other. When plugged into a laptop, it pretends to be a sound card and injects that audio directly into the Dante network. One other quick comment before I go. A lot of the video devices out there that have multiple inputs will use the signal on input 1 as a sync source for everything inside the unit. Which means that if input 1 is cutting in and out or the signal format changes, you might actually see some fluctuations in the output. So it's probably not a good idea to have some sort of signal source which might be connecting and disconnecting or going to sleep and waking up on input 1 of your device. Be sure and check your device offline to see if it behaves like this. And if it does, just use another input. It's an easy enough problem to solve. So there you go. Seven of the most common challenges that I've seen when connecting laptops into video production systems and a few solutions in order to overcome them. I very, very highly recommend you pick up one or both of these units. As both of them are actually great problem solvers, they'll both get you out of a lot of sticky situations. If you're interested in buying one or both of these units, please consider using one of the links in the description of the video down below. It helps this channel out quite a bit. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. I do video production related content about once a week. And I do take requests, so if there's something you want to learn about, please let me know. If you're running your own video production business, please take a look at my website, crewaxis.com. It helps you to manage all aspects of your business, whether it be your crew, your finances, your equipment. It's all there. There are pricing plans available from free all the way up to enterprise. Use the link in the description down below to receive a discount. Thanks everyone for watching and have a fantastic day.